I try to over plan. I got four standard military foot lockers, one standard military duffel bag, and I carry on. Okay, I'm scared of this man. I don't think he should be allowed to leave the country, let alone leave a prison. Hello everyone, I'm Alex and welcome back to another episode of TLC's 90 Day Fiancé. Today we're looking at this guy has enough gear for his trip to meet his love in Brazil. So he's just over preparing, you know, for his super long relationship that he's trying to secure within 90 days. So let's see how this man prepares to meet the love of his life. Oh, you're crazy. You only speak the same native language. That's never going to work. Yeah, language is just a barrier, like borders, which you're crossing over. So quite clearly, this man has no limitations on who he is willing to date. Some may call that desperate. I call it trying to find true love. My other concern is that Korea's hometown is so remote. You can't drive to it. The only way to get there is to fly into a main city and actually go up river for several days by boat. You know, people might call him crazy again. But he's not, he's not crazy. He really isn't. He's just committed to finding love, all right? He's not crazy yet. So, withdraw your judgment. I'm leaving in two days to make this huge journey to Brazil. Oh, okay. Um, Alright, I'm starting to get an idea of why people called him crazy in the first place now. He's got, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten suitcases? You've got two arms, mate. How are you going to carry and lug those around Brazil? And he's got all that, but he doesn't bring himself a football, you know? It's one of the native countries of the sport. Ignore the fact that I nearly chucked that in my own face, then. Well, I can't really make out what he's packing so far. All I could see is what looks like an Indiana Jones hat for his great adventure. So let's see what he's bringing to meet the love of his life. I try to over plan. I got four standard military foot lockers. Okay, um, there's over planning. And then there's planning for what seems to be World War Three. Is there a reason why they have to be military? Are you going to Brazil or are you invading Brazil? You know, I just wanted to go to Brazil. You know, I love the country and I love the women there. I'm going to go over there and kill all of the men. So all the women are mine. 90 day fiance. One standard military duffel bag and I carry on. Alright, I'm getting kind of worried with the amount of military stuff that he's mentioning here. And by carry on, does he mean like his sidearm or just another military bag? Is that a bulletproof vest? Is that a bulletproof vest that he's holding in his hand? I think he's going to attack. I got a heat vest to help deal with the temperature. We're down there. It's a head wrap to help heat stroke or heat exhaustion. Mate, if you turn up to meet your future wife wearing that, no matter what the native language is, I'm sure you'll be able to understand what go away means. Actually, maybe go away wouldn't stop him. He's got five military bags. We've got various types of uh, water filters. Better to have it and not need it than need it than not have it. And a plug. You know, and a plug. Just in case when you're visiting the mud huts of Brazil, you could charge your iPhone. Better to need it and not have it than have it and not need it. I think is what he said. In regards to the issue of the parasitic fish that will actually attract to human urine, and actually swim up your urethra, the doctor told me to basically take a standard condom and uh, delicately secure it to myself. I didn't need that much information, mate. Maybe just don't piss in the river. That might help. Without cutting off circulation, of course. Yeah, just in case you accidentally put the condom on so tight your dick falls off. Because that wouldn't be good, would it? Not when you're about to meet the love of your life in Brazil. I actually have uh, more than one pair of these. Better to look like an idiot and be protected than... Uh... I feel for the girl who he's going to meet. Because she's going to have to literally unwrap him to be able to see what he looks like. And that will be the most disappointing version of a kinder surprise that I've ever seen. Are you going to wear this every day? Mm. Only if I feel it's necessary. He looks like he's wearing a ghillie suit. Like he's going to be sitting in the wild bushes of Brazil, 
picking women off until he finds the one that he likes the most. But basically, it's a uh, head-to-toe mosquito suit. Now, the video ends there, but I found part two, which is titled, Corinne's parents aren't psyched for Paul to take her to a hotel for the night. I wonder why. Tore, Karine, Estada, Esteja, Im, Um, Hotel. He just shook his head. No, no, you can't. And he even turned up without wearing that full costume <laughs> that he had on. And he still gets turned away. So imagine what would have happened if he'd have turned up looking like he was preparing to invade a small little village. I actually asked her parents' permission to take Karini to a, a hotel um, to stay with me. But based on his facial expressions, this is definitely not going well right about now. Yeah, the more you stand there and just nod, um, the creepier it gets, mate. In Brazil, it's only for sexual encounters. No, no, sir, not me. I've just flown over here from America with my seven military bags wearing a condom already <laughs> to protect from the fish that are going to try to eat my dick off. Um, not to come and take your daughter away from you so you'll never see her again. That's not the reason. Thank God Paul's trying to clear it up by trying to translate more stuff like, I will not kidnap your daughter. You should get that translation because people are going to be asking you that a lot. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, Karini's father thought I was asking, hey, can I take your daughter to have sex with her in a, in a, in a, a motel or something of that nature? <laughs> well, what else were you asking? <laughs> You've flown to Brazil on a TV program called 90 Day Fiance. I don't think he's got the wrong end of the stick here, Paul. Which is ironic, because I'm not looking to rush into anything like that right now with Karini. No, of course you're not. You're not looking to rush anything. You've never met her before, then <laughs> you fly into Brazil. Uh, but no, no rushing. <laughs> Don't be silly, everyone. Don't be silly. In the past, sex definitely caused drama and problems for me. But I haven't told Karini about any of that yet. Oh, please. Oh, let go of her, mate. Let go of her and stop smiling like that, please. Just... Please, let go. I'm backing away. If I back away, will you let go of her? Please. The way he taps her shoulder, it's just so eerie. It's so eerie. Without cutting off circulation, of course, then it will cover my urethra area. <laughs> this is the most awkward thing I've ever seen. I'm sure you could overlay my face in there in post because I just kind of looked as equally shocked as the parents did. Keep, uh, e Prometo Mantella di Segranse e Meto Anro. Now, if you thought that it ends there, as it does once again, I found part three, which is worryingly titled, How Will Corinne React to Paul Confessing His Mysterious Past? What could that possibly be? I'm really concerned and nervous that. When Karini finds out about my past, she's going to just walk away like all the other women did. What have you done, Paul, to make all the women walk away? Oh. Oh! Okay! <laughs> and now, what I said at the beginning of this video is very, very ominous. Okay, I'm scared of this man. I don't think he should be allowed to leave the country, let alone leave a prison. I have a lengthy criminal record. I've been in jail, I've been in prison for uh, numerous things. Uh... Oh. Yeah, but what did you do? Did you, get, did you kill someone? Did you travel to Brazil and try and steal a woman into a hotel room without her parents knowing that you're a convicted criminal? Because <laughs> that's a bit dodgy, isn't it? I was accused of burning my own house, burning my own personal property, and spent about 18 months in jail. Now, we know that he'd never do that because it quite clearly loves to over-prepare. So, he wouldn't burn all of that stuff unless he used it as a murder weapon on a trip to Brazil. <sighs> oh, no. So what really happened is he, he basically tried to burn the house down, didn't he? 
uh, with his ex-girlfriend um, living there, I suppose. Um, and now there's a restraining order. No wonder he's gone to Brazil. He's actually gone there not because of the fact that he's not allowed to find a girl in America, but because of the fact that he had to leave America due to the restraining order because she's actually got it set for her entire country. And then a few years ago, I was in a very terrible relationship. She took out a emergency protective order on me. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. oh. She doesn't deserve damaged goods. It's not fair to her. So why did you fly to Brazil then, mate? Why did you do that? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh... No way, He's he's run away. He's run away. Never to be seen again. I need my space right now. I need to walk away for a little bit. Cranny definitely does not deserve to have someone like me that constantly has problems around her. So I hope she understands I can't be with her. <laughs> and he just fucking runs off. <laughs> he just runs away. Probably to burn down her house. Well, that's it for another episode of 90 Day Fiancé. Now, I'm still open. Looking for a 90 day fiance, and I do not have a criminal record, so you don't have to worry about me trying to burn your house down. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. It'd be greatly appreciated, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, people. Have a good day.